often the media will portray this as a conflict with two sides and that couldn't be farther from the truth and more just insanely maddeningly uh, 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 false. Voila! In view, a humble vaudevillian veteran cast vicariously as both victim and villain. Remember these words. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Three words that will ring from coast to coast, from sea to shining sea. Yes, we can. There have been times here where it wasn't done the right way. And if we go back to the, uh, the riot that ensued when uh, the former well, at the time, the former Prime Minister of, of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, was set to, to speak at Concordia. That was inappropriate. Well, it was my second day of class. There was a, a former Prime Minister, now the Prime Minister of Israel now, who, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, was supposed to come speak on campus. Uh, he was brought in by Hillel, and uh, around 900 uh, protesters started a riot outside Concordia and deemed it unsafe for Netanyahu to come in to speak to the students. Now, when Netanyahu comes, not only is there not a debate in, in the Concordia administration, uh, you know, he's welcomed with open arms, and people, rightfully so, from the campus community said, we're not going to take this. Majority of students at Concordia have a real understanding, uh, a non-cushioned um, understanding of real life outside the campus. I identify as a Jew. I identify as um, someone who has a lot of care for Israel. I identify as someone who has a lot of care for human beings. I am a Palestinian. My mother's family um, are Palestinian. I'm half Palestinian. My uh, dad's uh, side of the family are, are uh, Syrian. Primarily I identify myself as a Jewish Canadian. Uh, my father's family is from Romania, and my mother's family thinks like third generation Canadian. But like my identity is Canadian, um, and I'm Jewish. Most of the people who are organizers are Palestinian, Arab, or Jewish. I mean, you know, I would be a minority in in this. As a Jew, it's really important for me to to criticize uh, that anti-Semitism. So part of my job is to run pro-Israel events on campus. Um, and to uh, build bridges with other groups on campus and make sure that Israel is portrayed in a positive way and to, uh, to promote Israel and Jewish identity on campus. All right, my name is Abdullah Daud. We're here for uh, as Israeli Apartheid Week in Concordia campus. Uh, just to take you through what we're going to do, uh, Israeli Apartheid Week is an internationally known event. It's happening in university campuses all over the world uh, around the same time. Uh, we're shedding light on the Israeli apartheid policies within Israel and the injustices that are happening in the occupied territories and the siege just going on in Gaza. The Israeli Apartheid Week well, first started in 2005 in Toronto um, as a means of having a unified week uh, with the hopes of it going worldwide, which it has. Well, it is a, a whole week of activities, sometimes more, um, uh, to highlight the plight of Palestinian human rights and to um, the highlight of the violations uh, of those rights by the Israeli state. Uh, I say it's modest because um, it's, it's simply a popular education week. The anti-apartheid analysis is based in an analysis that's coming from Palestinian uh, uh, activists and community organizations as well as the, 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 the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement. It's a negative term. And I think right there we, we have issues because the, the like the, just by the name itself, the event doesn't invite open discussion because it just starts off right away as being negative. Calling this week Israel Apartheid Week is meant to sift out certain people. Critics of Israeli Apartheid Week will say that um, IW just serves to um, shut down the debate Yet I find that's very ironic because a lot of the critics of Israeli Apartheid Week also try to have um, our events censored or canceled. The event itself is not an open forum for discussion. I have absolutely no problems with either view. I think it's important to express your view on either side. I just think the way that they go about it is, is more negative. It's more negative towards Israel and it doesn't become a dialogue for discussion. It doesn't become a dialogue for, for promoting peaceful solutions. And that, that's my issue. 
the title Israel Apartheid Week seems to make all people who support Israel the bad person. There's like an evil implication there. It's like the big bad Israeli government and like and so like you start off right away by by inviting that that image and and which is which is what they're trying to do essentially. You know, you hear Zionists complain that uh, that uh, pro-Palestinian solidarity workers are trying to um, you know, make Israel into a rogue state, or uh, you know, make it uh, uh, look down at. Well, yes, that is what we're trying to do. But I still think that there is that room for dissenters or for people who don't agree or maybe partially agree to to come out and to um, to engage in these issues. To make it socially unacceptable to support Israel, no, nothing to hide there. This is the goal. And this is where we're going to go to. And this is where we're going to get to. Language is, is there to describe things. And uh, the best of uh, speech is the shortest and most concise. It, democracies are supposed to abide by law and promote law and promote the rule of law and international law. So we're invoking that and kind of, I guess, kind of sticking it in certain people's faces who will only say that when it's politically convenient. I think that people are very intentional with the words that they use in this discussion or any discussions. Um, and I think that for some people, they use big words or they use emotional words like racism or like apartheid um, to get a certain reaction. It makes Israel seem like the big bad white supremacists of South Africa. Like, like it, it ties them to that, and like, and like that's why they're 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 using it. Why we kind of almost insist on using the term apartheid now is because by using the apartheid paradigm, it actually allows us to to open up the focus a little bit and to see the issue um, in a much broader context. The university's policy is first and foremost not to censor. The attitude is, is that dialogue, even on sensitive issues, does belong in university. I don't believe that apartheid is such a scary or offensive term. I actually think that this is kind of a bit of a propaganda ploy um, by the pro-Israeli lobby to frame apartheid as such and to make it this, you know, extremely divisive and, and controversial term. I think that the term apartheid would put and does put a lot of pro-Israel people, I'm putting them in their boxes, um, on the defense. I think it really depends which side you sit on. Um, even monologue is not something that uh, is problematic as long as those who disagree with that have a forum as well. But as someone who in like every part of my being cares for Israel cares for the future of Palestine. Those words, apartheid, genocide, I don't know how to react. I don't know how to engage in dialogue. I feel like I'm being shut out. There's a national identity incorporated in being Jewish. And so people have a hard time separating being Jewish from, from being Israeli. Calling somebody anti-Semite, uh, I mean, this is the, the biggest, uh, the worst label that you can label anybody in the Western society. Oh, I've been called anti-Semite a million times. Did it affect me? No. There will always be certain groups that will hang on to the image of Concordia as anti-Semitic. Concordia has never been anti-Semitic. There's no necessary correlation or connection between somebody who's pro-Palestinian and somebody who's anti-Semitic. It's just their views towards a government. Um, the, my problem with Israel Apartheid Week is that it becomes less about the government and more about the entire country. I mean, if someone can actually come to me and really lay it out why criticizing the state of Israel amounts to 
anti-Jewish hatred. I'd be really interested to see that, but I don't think there's been any substantive uh, evidence until this day. The first part of our work was educating our own community, the Palestinian, the Arab and Muslim community about this difference. And we had the hardest time in the beginning because they were like, well, look, the Jewish lobby, the Israeli lobby, B'nai B'rath, Canadian Jewish Congress are saying Israel speaks on behalf of all Jews. Why are you saying they don't? And we were like, no, they are lying, as bin Laden is lying and saying he is speaking on behalf of all Muslims. Israeli apartheid week will happen at Concordia, as long as it's done properly. And anyone opposed to that point of view has the absolute opportunity to book space, mount an exhibit, bring in speakers, and we will facilitate for both sides.